When I applied to college, my intended major was actually computer science. I really was not anticipating a career in the humanities and really didn't even know that a career in the humanities you know, could be the rewarding thing that it absolutely has proven to be for me. Uh, I shortly after applying to college uh, actually made the decision to transfer into the business school of the university that I was attending, which is the University of Pennsylvania, which has a, a well-known business school. And it was actually in my first semester, probably to the great horror of my very practically minded parents that I uh, decided to become an English major. Uh, and I think it was really in college for the first time that I was exposed to the opportunities of the humanities as a as the deep uh, and really meaningful set of disciplines um, that it is. Uh, and I would say too that I think that one of the things that I learned early on in my in my college education was, uh, you know, kind of not to get discouraged by early critical reviews. If there's something you want, keep on pursuing it. And I say this because um, as a freshman, I remember I was really sort of, you know, kind of finding myself in the world of, of English literature. And for the first time, just kind of understanding the, the different ways that you could approach um, a text or, you know, eventually an artwork. And I remember some of my first experiences were were pretty negative with um, a freshman professor actually accusing me of plagiarism in my first mm. semester because she thought something that I wrote was on the one hand so interesting and on the other hand so dumb that she couldn't believe that I had actually written the whole thing. So, you know, that, that was an experience to really, you know, kind of kind of keep on pressing forward. And I guess it was really during college that I was exposed to the discipline of, of art and arch architectural history for the first time. Again, I had thought as a kid that I might be an architect and, and realized that, you know, actually studying the art and architectural works of others was probably where my passion lay. Um, and, you know, I, I think it was in college that uh, towards the end of my college years, as I was also doing more traveling and having some great opportunities to live in other places, that I decided to pursue um, uh, a graduate degree in, in art history. So I pursued my master's and um, doctoral degree at Yale and you know, actually studied uh, kind of the, the not particularly well-recognized discipline of, of British art of the 19th century. And uh, it was not a coincidence and it was not a passion that was driven purely by an aesthetic interest in, in British art of the 19th century. But I really did see um, Britain in the 19th century as this fascinating um, place in which the collision between the arts and society was just magnified in, in ways that I had not known about and, and that seemed very interesting to me. So definitely the, the, the kind of the social nexus of, of art has always been what has um, been most meaningful for me. One other thing I'll add that I really did learn in graduate school, I think that is a a skill and an interest that remains with me today and, and really shapes just how I approach my life and my work. Uh, the, the value of, of research, the value of kind of really trying to understand as many perspectives as possible before reaching a conclusion, and then the critical importance of ensuring that you could communicate that that research and those conclusions in an effective manner. You know, I guess if you if you've got the ability to to research, explore options, understand and analyze situations, and and communicate them, um, you're on a reasonably good footing in life. And and I would really say that was a an exceptionally important part of graduate education for me.